Nicholas. Thank you, Nicholas. And uh, a very special thank you to Giannina for all of her help. Uh, excellent help. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take you into the future. It is now the 20th of May, 2016. There are no IPv4 addresses available for you to grow your network with from LACNIC. In order to grow your network, many of your customers will bring an IPv6 connection to you, but many will not, not in 2016, and probably not in 2017, hopefully by 2018. To get IPv4 addresses to grow your network, you must go to the IPv4 address market. Or you can NAT, but I don't recommend that. When you need addresses from the market, what you most often look for is the best price. You may pay $10 for an IP address. You may pay $30 for an IP address. You're probably going to choose to pay $10. The problem is, what if that price and what if those IP addresses are in a different RIRs who is? You buy those addresses, and now you must set up an account with a different RIR. You must figure out what their rules are. You may need to communicate with them in their language. They may be in a much different time zone than you are, and they may not understand you, and you may not understand them. One of the real benefits of having five RIRs is that we deal with RIR staff who speak our language, who are in our time zone, who understand many of our customs, and whose policies we are acquainted with, we are familiar with. So next year, on the 20th of May 2016, if you buy IP addresses to grow your network so you can continue to be successful, it would be a very good idea, I think, if you can move those IP addresses from the registry you bought them to LACNIC. So we have made policy proposal 2015-2, the inter-RIR transfer policy. This proposal is a one-way proposal. This is the second version of this policy. The original version allowed IP addresses to leave the region to go to another RIR, and this was um, considered unacceptable on the public policy mailing list. We have altered the proposal so that addresses can move into LACNIC, which allows networks which operate in the LACNIC region, get excess IP addresses from other RIRs, and move it to LACNIC. This is good for network operations. It's good as I've just described it. it it's good if you have equipment in LACNIC that people can go to LACNIC who is and look up that IP address. In many cases, I think we want that to happen. Is there a way to go back? So this is the proposal. Think about tomorrow, and think about what you're going to need to grow. Do you really want to have an account at Aaron, or at Ripe, or at Afrinic, or at, Lac or at uh, APNIC? I think it's better if we have one here. This is the end of my proposal. Thank you. Thank you, David.
we will now go to the comments part. If anyone has any comments or questions to make on the transfers, please remember to introduce yourselves before making your comments. To this uh, work you, you have done, I will say that I'm against this proposal, as I stated in the mailing list. I have some reasons. And uh, I would like to state that you, you said a couple of times that we, we don't have IP address in this region or might not have IP address in this region by next year. But it's not quite that. We, we still have a small portion, but we still have. I think it's, it's important to make it clear that LACNIC still, uh, still has a, 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 a IPv4 pool to distribute in a certain way. So uh, organizations at this date can receive a small portion. And new organization with no allocation will be able to receive some small portion in the future as well for a long time. Um, I have a, some notes here. <laughs> Let's see. Specifically with, with the text, I don't know if we, we, we can bring the text at the, the, the screen, but there is a point, 232x4, that uh, an organization that received a transfer cannot transfer this space again. According to the new version, only uh, it won't only be possible to receive IP address from outside of region to organization side of the region, right? So if someone started the transfer from outside of the region, LACNIC has no power to uh, not allow that organization that originated the transfer to receive no more IP address because it's outside of the region of LACNIC. It's just a question of, uh, of the, how the text is written. The same thing or similar thing applies to the 232x5. Uh, let's see what else. Other things that, uh, as I stated in the mailing list, I think it's, it's important to bring here. Other regions only start to have this type of uh, actions once they deplete the, 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 the IPv4, IPv4 pool they have. And uh, in the ripe region, they have a, a policy like this one, and they are facing a, a problem there, is that any organization can, can receive up to a slash 22, 1,024 IP address from ripe. And they, they are seeing a lot of shell companies being created just to receive this slash 22 in order to sell this IP address just after that. So it's, uh, it's, it's very risky for our region to allow this type of s situation once LACNIC still have IPv4 to distribute. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, no more see IPv4 as, in, as, as a resource, but as a, a, a commodity to make money from it. I don't think this is, is good for the region. And uh, also, the, the policy proposal states that the organization could justify the transfer considering 24 months of uh, need. I think it's too large. It's incompatible with the current pro uh, uh, procedure from LACNIC that's considered only 12 months. 20, 24 months is, is a lot. It's very difficult to really uh, check that they, they, they need some organization present for 24 months is really what will happen in the future. Thank you. Um, um, I, I think I'm going to speak in Spanish, so if you want to, okay. Just to, you know, speak in our own language. <laughs> um, it, una, yo, tengo dos, dos consultas y dos comentarios. Bueno, por supuesto que ahora estoy aquí hablando como Nicolás de Uruguay, no como moderador. ¿sí? Eh, un, un comentario es sobre el, el punto, o sea, la, la política es sobre transferencia de bloques IP4 desde otro RIR hacia LACNIC. 
y en el, en el punto 232 menciona que la entidad origen debe ser titular del derecho de uso. Sorry, states that the origin has to be that of use and this should not be involved or related to that. So the question is, and the other part of the policy that deals with the entity that originated the transfer cannot request this after a period of one year once it was transferred to the LACNIC region. The block was transferred to the LACNIC region. So understand that they cannot request this to their own RIR. So my question is, the way I read it, it might look as if it were inconsistent. This is because my impression is that from the LACNIC region, we're imposing things on the region that originates the transfer. In other words, I think LACNIC should not indicate what policy the other region has to do regarding the transfers to other regions. So that is one of the question or comment. The other question has to do with the final point on 2328. The recipients within the LACNIC region must demonstrate the need for up to a 24-month supply of IPv4 address space. I understand that here, according to the previous point, maybe 2328 should be omitted regarding what should be met with by the recipients. That is the requirements of the RIR. In other words, the 24-month specification could contradict the requirements of the RIR. And then I have another question. I don't know if there's someone here from the Arin region. I understand that there are some rears that have have a policy in place that they cannot trigger transfers outside if the recipient of the policy of the block doesn't have a policy to transfer outwards. If it's not reciprocal, I won't transfer anything to you, in other words. So this is a single way, a one-way policy, so I think this might be a conflict, so we would be blocking a transfer from Arin to LACNIC, even when we would approve this policy. And the last comment, I had made a suggestion in the discussion forum regarding the analysis, a proposal that should be analyzed, rather, if it wouldn't be a better idea, because I understand we do need a transfer policy, not having a transfer policy when most of the other RIRs already have a transfer policy in place, really puts our region at a disadvantage and might lead to inconsistencies regarding the global administration of the resources. So I think it is good to have a transfer policy in place. And as Ricardo was saying, during the forum and once again now, I think that our region doesn't have that problem or shouldn't have that problem of wishing to transfer to other parts or the need to transfer to other regions, but rather the need to receive resources. So maybe we could consider a mechanism that divides a policy into two parts. On one hand, to have a policy that could be a global policy or one that is applied at all RIRs that agrees on the administrative mechanisms of the requirements that should be met in order to transfer to request transfers, and then a second one would be to have one for outgoing transfers. If that would be approved at all RIRs, then we wouldn't have to be having this two-way transfer. So in that case, we wouldn't have to have uh, the requirement for having outgoing uh, transfers. Um. 
I'm going to. Uh, many of uh, our RIR colleagues, many of those who participate in these policy forums throughout the world, have talked about is this the time or should we pursue a global policy on inter RIR transfers? And uh, I know I think that's a very good idea. Global policy is difficult, um, and it's further difficult because of the situation in Afrinic. Um, where they have quite a lot of address space. They are not anywhere near their last slash eight. Um, they go through addresses very slowly, um, and their community has expressed they have no interest in participating in inter RAR transfers right now for many of the reasons uh, Ricardo had uh, indicated for LACNIC. Um, you are correct, I agree with you, that the 24-month language in section X.8 uh, accidentally might overwrite the overall policies of LACNIC, and uh, I agree with you, we, sh we should remove, in a future version, should remove that language. Um, in general, uh, more of a response to Ricardo, I guess, uh, the, the idea of 24 months, the idea of larger than a year, um, it is much more difficult for an RIR staff or an NIR staff to look at that and, and say, well, that's a long time. How do we know this is going to be true? It is more difficult. But operating in the market is also difficult for the network. It involves a lot of time. It involves lawyers. It involves finance people. It's a lot of money going transferring hands. And sometimes these transactions take many months. Um, also, networks, especially as they get bigger, as you grow from 20s to 19s to 18s to 16s and larger, uh, it takes time to deploy. It takes time to plan. It takes time to deploy. And it takes time to reach uh, utilization. So 24 months is a, is a little easier on the network operator. Um, let's see, what was the point before that? Uh, oh, so the one year about the restriction. One of the ways we like to write policy, or I like to see policy, is to address those who want to make money by flipping IP addresses. Buy for 5,000 euros here and sell for 10,000 euros next week. This, this does not help anybody. So one of the policy levers we have is to say, if, as a LACNIC member, you receive a transfer of IP addresses through this policy from another region that you've purchased, you can't transfer it. You can't do anything with it except use it on your own network, or you can't transfer it to somebody else for a period of time. In the proposal text, that's currently one year, but we can make it whatever we want it to be. But that, that is there simply to prevent people from speculating in the market, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. Thank you. Perdón, Alejandro Guzmán de Google y LACNIC. Eh, quería comentar que al inicio está un... I wanted to say that initially it was, I was against the proposal, but that uh, now that I understand uh, the problem that we, tr we try to address, I feel that I've changed my mind. And the issue is that we are not trying... We, we don't want to to stop the transfers from happening because they still happen and so as they exist the best thing is to keep record of them so that we can handle them properly and not just that uh, they may happen and uh, the RIRs don't know where they are and we might have problems to know where they are because they are not registered in the proper region. My main problems with this policy is that uh, it may be used uh, so that LECNIC will lose uh, 
um, the, the very little space that it has uh, because it would go abroad. But now it, that problem no longer exists. So what, with what uh, Nicola said, for instance, I don't see that that would happen because in the other part of the policy, you are addressing that problem. For instance, the fact that it will not be used uh, to uh, take them away from here. You can't do that. And uh, you should and or that it shouldn't be used for a, an internal market in a domestic market in Latin America. You can't do that either because you can't do that either according to and uh, it, and the fact that it needs to be uh, need based uh, and that you have a certain deadline and and you can't send them for a certain period that is foreseen in the policy. So as it is the policy even if it lacks things as we have to see to the compatibility with what other uh, regional registries have uh, to make the transfer effective, I think it's a good start. So I think it's understandable that uh, today transfers are happening already around the world. So I think that it's something that we should do. in Canada and uh, the RNAC. Um, I can't speak on behalf of the Advisory Council. Uh, it's not appropriate, but I can speak as a community member in the Aran region. There was a question in regards to reciprocal, this reciprocal nature um, in Aran. Um, yes, there is text that specifically states reciprocal. Um, would this policy be incompatible? I don't personally know. Um, but we have a chicken and an egg. If the LACNIC region doesn't want to do inter-RIR transfers, there's no point in Aaron and the Aaron community changing the current policy. However, if the LACNIC region did want some kind of inter-RIR policy and it went down that path, then the Aaron community could look at that, say there's a policy there, can we make our policy now work with their policy? So somebody has to jump first. Um, if you don't want it, then there's no point in us changing it. If you want it, then I'm sure there will be somebody who proposes something in our region to make the policies compatible. I would, uh, I would thank you, Kevin. I would like to echo Kevin's point because I, I did forget to address it uh, to Nicholas. Um, Aaron requires what's called reciprocity. You must be able to move space in and out of your region if you want to move space in or out of the Aran region. This came from Aran's very first policy on inter-RIR transfers when it was new. Um, uh, I am a very active member of the Aran policy community and I have discussed this with many of my peers and if the LACNIC region or any region wishes to have a one-way policy uh, I think there will be broad support for removing the reciprocal requirement. So then that takes us to RIPE, which is uh, one of the, the newest member of the Inter-RAR Transfer Policy Club. Um, RIPE only has that in there because Aaron does. If Aaron removes it, I'm very confident RIPE will remove it, that requirement. Carlos? I'm going to speak Spanish. Okay. Um, I'm Carlos Martinez of LACNIC. As a member of the staff and having participated in the RIRS community even before becoming part of the staff for over 10 years already, I think that where we are standing today, transfers will occur with or without the approval of the RIRs. It's a fact, and it would be stubborn to deny it. So what uh, I am worried about, I won't say anything about this proposal in particular, but I think that we need policies that may enable us to uh, uh, ass ensure the integrity of the registries, not just LACNIC, but all of them in the long term, especially in a scenario where the interaction between the registries and their members will be even more sporadic because the cycles for requesting more resources will be will become more sporadic. So the data update window that used to be more frequent will 
become more sporadic. I think that we need a body of transfer policies that may ensure the integrity of the registry in the long term. I think that all as a community win if the transfers happen within a, a clear policy framework. My name is Pablo Kellis of Dominican Republic. I'm going to speak Spanish. I'm in favor that this policy may be seen as the beginning, as a proposal, something necessary in my understanding to define this is the but the, it, it, then it has to be completed with a bi-directionality that is not just a policy as we as LACNIC, not we shouldn't be able just to receive address, but a policy to transfer um, addresses to other RIRs. And precisely, I was uh, consulting that a few minutes ago. I was consulting about ARIN's policies, about the inter-regional uh, transfers. In your website, it states, a transfer, an inter-RIR transfer may only occur between RIRs that share need-based uh, uh, policies compatible and reciprocal. AP NIC at present is the only RIR whose trans inter-RIR transfer policies are compatible with ARIN. That's what ARIN says in your website, that only AP NIC uh, is uh, uh, compatible for official transfers for inter RIRs. Other RIRs have, uh, are developing proposals for policies that will improve compatibility with ARIN, but they might not be implemented until in a while, uh, some time. And a note, due to efforts consolidated between multiple RIRs and multiple organizations, the time to conclude an inter-RIR transfer may vary. What does APNIC say in turn in their own policies? Section 8.2, it says, IPv4 address uh, transfers between RIRs. APNIC will recognize IPv4 uh, address uh, transfers into RIR only when the counterpart RIR has a, a a, a policy for transfer inter RIRs that may allow for the exchange of uh, addresses between APNIC and the region. So they also expect uh, being uh, the reciprocity. So as one of the previous speakers said, uh, it is we uh, need uh, to change the policies because the transfers will be done anyway. I have just uh, consulted one of the internet uh, sites where they have auctions for IPv4 addresses and indeed here we have ARIN addresses precisely and the prices for IP addresses in blocks slash 24 and larger usually range from $8 and $24 for IP, each IP address. That's just uh, as uh, an example taken from ARIN. Now I won't mention the company. Now what do they say? That company that uh, has that in auction says, all the transfers will be facilitated through this company will be subject to the approval of the regional registry. Those that bet uh, are motivated uh, to apply for a pre-approval with their RIR before the auction. So, obviously, not all the companies in the internet will uh, care to do this as formally and uh, suggest an organization to go to their RIR first. This one, according to the policies, they are doing it, but I understand that we are in a good path if we start uh, with uh, the policies in that direction, but in my view, before it's valid, 
to be considered for ratification, I understand that it should uh, be bi-directional. So I compared the specifications. It should be two-way. So I compared what you put in your proposal in the uh, pages of LACNIC uh, with that of the United States, and they coincide in many aspects, including that the minimum to be assigned should, should be slash 24, although the, the duration instead of 12 months is 24 before another possible transfer. But most of the rest is very similar to that of Aaron. That's my comment as a summary. We are starting very well, but I recommend that we should define the policy in the other way, too. That is, from here, from LACNIC toward other RIRs. Thank you. I'll continue in Spanish, if you don't mind. Do you mind if I, he's asking whether you mind if he speaks Spanish? Dave mentioned that one of the reasons for putting a 24 month term is that for the organization that is trying the transfer, it's very costly to look for the documentation and the company and all that. But I don't think that the cost of uh, uh, conducting this 24 month analysis should fall upon the RIR to do a 24-month analysis. So it's expensive, but it's a cost that needs to be paid by the company. I don't think that that cost should be transferred to the RIR. It wouldn't be sensible. It wouldn't be fair. Now, they, some people also said that the transfer policies are important because uh, they um, the transfers are already occurring. It's, it's right, but I think that there, we should need better proposals that may enable us to r register the transfers, but not creating further problems, protecting the communities and protecting the importance of IPv4 as an infrastructure and not as an asset, not to create a market just for the sake of the market. If the proposals are important, that's excellent, but we should create proposals that should not create new problems, as I mentioned. That's my comment. Many people say, we already have transfers. Well, I haven't seen any. And if you're aware of any, I'd like to learn about it. Thank you. Hey, Paul Wilson. A couple of things about the APNIC policies in case there are some uh, misunderstandings. Uh, our inter-RIR transfer policies require that the other RIR has got a, a policy that allows the transfer. So we will transfer to another RIR if the other RIR has a policy that allows the transfer to be received. We will transfer from another RIR if that other RIR has a policy that allows the transfer to be given to us. We don't require that in order to transfer to LACNIC, that LACNIC must allow transfers to APNIC. That's nowhere in our in our policies. If it's if it's in other RIR policies, I'm not not sure about that, but it's not an aspect of ours. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Paul. I'd like to respond to that real quickly. Um, as long as a free pool exists for anybody, if you're a new if you want to create a new LACNIC uh, membership and you want to get a slash 22 from the remaining free pool, as long as this is a, able to happen, I think it's a bad idea to allow transfers out of LACNIC. I think this for two reasons. One, we are seeing what's happening in RIPE. And there's a lot of address space leaving RIPE, going to other regions uh, based on uh, false requests, okay? So as long as the free pool exists, we, uh, it might be a good idea to only have a one-way policy. It's a short-term thing. The other problem is uh, Afrinic has a lot of space, as we've talked about. And LACNIC has space for new entrants. So that's two, and RIPE has it as well, you know? So that's three RIRs where you can get new space. So maybe this idea of reciprocity, now that we've had a few years with this, maybe it's not so good. Maybe we should 
say as a community, no, you can bring space in, but you can't take space out, and let other regions modify their policies accordingly. Just my opinion. I'm going to speak Spanish again. Uh, um, the only comment is that I understand the issue of reciprocity will have to take place at some moment, but these can be two separate policy proposals. We need not include that debate right now. Yeah, I would, following Polis, and clarify a bit regarding our inter-area uh, policy. RIPEX is here currently implementing this, and we're expecting it to be ready in August, end of August. And our uh, policy is similar to the ones in APNIC. When it's coming in, it needs to comp uh, be compatible with our policies. When it's going out, it needs to be compatible with the other region. There's no mention of reciprocal um, in our uh, inter area transfer policy. Any further comments? Yes, after listening to all the comments, I'd like to reinforce that the way the policy is drafted right now, I think it won't harm the region because I don't see where the harm could come from. I only see a benefit, and namely, this is that we can register the transfers. And regarding the reciprocity issue, I think that this does not imply that this is an equal policy, but if you send, you can receive, and if you receive, you can send. So I think that is an issue that has been solved somehow. Now, if we vote a policy now, this is to cater for a need, and this could be modified at the next policy forum. So I agree that we should have a more open discussion to give this some more time, and we want to have the best policy possible. But if we have something that is good enough and that caters for the problems or the potential risk that we had before, then we needn't have to wait until we have another policy forum to continue discussing this. I think that this is adequately clear so that doesn't pose a risk if we can approve it today. And what I would do suggest that we should have a more active discussion at the policy forum, because when not much is debated during the list, and then we have all the discussion here, we have to wait a long time until we approve something new. So what I would suggest is approving it as it is today, but then to continue working on a new policy that is far more encompassing and takes into account all the reciprocity issues, etc., but with an active participation of the community. Thank you. Nicolas Antonielo from Uruguay once again. I allow myself to disagree with Alejandro. What I think is, once again, I agree with Carlos and the previous speakers. I had stated this in my previous participation. I agree and I am in favor that as a region we have to have a policy in place that regularizes transfers. On one hand, that is one point. So maybe there are some people who are here who did not have the opportunity of reading the policy or participating in the discussion list. You can think of many, many reasons whereby we need to have an administrative organization, a proper administration of the addresses, because firstly, because the assignment and allocation issue works because we respect things. If we don't have a mechanism f to administrate them, we cannot respect something that we don't have. So we need to have a mechanism, that on one side. Then we have the whole issue that motivates having a transfer policy. This is the geolocalization. If I don't know where certain addresses are located, then all the geolocation systems based on IP addresses 
would no longer be reliable. So there are many reasons and motivations whereby it is good to have things organized, and that is why we would need such a policy. On the other side, I think that the policy is a very good seed. I do believe that it does have some lack of compatibility and somehow overrides the policies and therefore I understand and well of course we have to add that it might be better to divide the problem into two parts or more parts and separate what is a receiving policy and a transfer policy outwards. So I think it would be more adequate as from the seed that we now have to continue developing the discussion in the list that we are all quite clear as to what the implications would be if we approve this policy. So ultimately, my position is that we have to continue discussing this issue. Let us f fine tune this version or some other version that we might have. And also, uh, f after hearing to the different representatives from the different RIRs who spoke a while ago, we even see things that we have to polish regarding the policies in each of the RIS before implementing a transfer. So in other words, the haste for approving the policy as it is drafted right now, I think, does not exist. And we should also recall that there are mechanisms in place of procedures so that approving a policy needn't have to wait until the next forum. There are other express mechanisms for approving policies. We have the expedite process, which has contained in our policy development process. So if we would need to approve a policy before the next forum, we have a mechanism in place to do so. That is all. Thank you. Good afternoon. We have two questions from people who are participating remotely through the chat room. One of these is from Alejandro Cruz from University of Mexico, and he refers to a comment of selling IP addresses, and he asks, how can we know or how can we be sure that that is a legal purchase and not only a specific interest or if the transfer does not imply a sale? And the other question is from Juan Peirano from Uruguay, who asks the following. During the presentation of this policy through WebEx, the author spoke in favor of waiting to implement this policy during the next exhaustion stage of IPv4 at LACNIC. Is the author still in favor of following this process? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I do think that uh, today, in 2015, um, anyone can get addresses when you need them from LACNIC. You have it gets a 22, you use it, you come and get more. While this exists, it may be prudent to take time to polish a policy, maybe separate the policy like Carlos and others have said. It, uh, it's a good thing to get this right. I don't, I agree with Nicolas, I don't think we should rush into this. This is a starting point. Throw it out there and see how it works, and then fine tune it and make it better so that when it happens, it happens the right way. Um, the first question uh, uh, about legal sale uh, is it a legal sale of IP addresses? Uh, I'm not sure I understood this. Yeah, so to anyone who is buying IP addresses, um, uh, I have bought many millions of IP addresses in the last few months, and I've learned a lot of lessons. And uh, it's very important that you work with your RIR to ensure it's allowed. It's important that you do very good, uh, what we call due diligence, that you 
do legal investigation into who is selling you these IP addresses to make sure that they are the registrant, to make sure that their RIR recognizes them as the registrant, um, so that when you buy the IP addresses and go to your RIR and ask to register them to you, uh, everything will go through. Be very careful. There are bad people out there who want to sell you bad things, but it, uh, there are many other good people out there who just don't need these IP addresses and they want money for them. So. Sí. Eh, un comentario adicional en respuesta a una de las, de las consultas. Eh, to one of the questions, I think that Evidently, if we have to try and think if the sale of IP addresses have other interests behind, of course there are interests behind this, and this does not give way to discussion. All RIRs have mechanisms in place so that any member of that IRR can return addresses to the RIR if they're not going to use them without receiving any benefit in exchange. So if I have IPv4 addresses or IPv6 addresses, I can return these to the RIR and the RIRs have policies, there is a global policy in force that enables RIRs to return address spaces to IANA and there's a policy that enables IANA to reallocate this to other RIRs to reassign these. All this exists and it is in force and this has happened. What we are discussing here is that the wonderful thing of IP addresses is that I can sell them if the RIR does not want me and nothing can do anything about it. So what we're trying to discuss with this policy is to regularize that market that will exist whether we like it or not. So the sell, sale of IP addresses always have a, s a specific aim, which is to receive money for the sale of an IP address. And what we're trying to do is to regularize this and to maintain the mechanism functional from the administrative point of view. Just one comment. I haven't really heard arguments against this. I have heard, with all due respect, the idea of dividing this into two. Well, this has already occurred. We don't speak about transfers out, so it's just inwards. So this is already contained this policy because the policy decided in a second version to withdraw the part of the outgoing addresses. So that is already catered for with this policy. So that would not be an argument against this policy because that has already been catered for. So what is the argument against this policy at this moment? No, I haven't listened to any argument really that deals with points where this policy is failing. So if you really have an argument against one of the points and that poses a risk to please state so because none of the arguments that I have heard are against this. So those that were included in the list were adjusted as we went along. Well, in an attempt uh, to direct uh, the discussion uh, toward the policy itself, my name is Alex Ojeda, and I have a doubt about item four, where it says, <coughs> and I, it, it, that's the only thing that I don't agree with, that when somebody receives a transfer automatically at the receiving uh, the incoming RIR, they won't be able to receive any more assignments. I think that if we are in a, a process of exhaustion, but the rules of the game are clear, I think that despite that, we could uh, respect uh, the regular processes and continue to receive uh, uh, addresses beyond the transfers. But why do I say this? Because when the web was done, I asked specifically whether this uh, proposal for a policy was represented a corporate interest in this case, or thinking of a, oh, how could we call it, 
Well, vested interest or thinking of the interest of the community. It strikes to me because for large companies such as Microsoft uh, or CD, large CDNs, well, it's necessary and they will need at a time to be able to transfer resources in uh, all, everything that they cover, but, that, but by the time, but when it applies to smaller companies, maybe they should not be denied the right to be able to continue to postulate to new requests. That's my view with regard to item four. Something that uh, I'm going to ask you if you can shorten the questions because it's rather late. Ricardo, as an answer to Alejandro, at least one thing that I think that is clear, I'm against several uh, items, but one, that those, those 24 months, the current proposal says that the company that will receive the transfer needs uh, to state uh, has to respect that need for 24 months and that is against what uh, Daknik says that it says that the person that uh, they speak of 12 months and 24 months in the proposal and they even uh, permit uh, large transfers and it's difficult uh, anybody can clearly show that the need for 24 months is real that's one issue and I think that the, we lack mechanisms to protect that the addresses will not become commodities for the people to sell, to see addresses as a potential source of money, of revenues. We don't want the addresses to stop being a resource. Uh, it should be seen as, um, I think that we lack a mechanism of protection to protect the addresses so they won't be seen as a, a resource of money. Uh, I'm from Ar Argentina. I think that we need to expressly contemplate the issue of reciprocity. I think that the, several, the many people that uh, um, spoke in this forum, uh, I think that the conclusion is that we should contemplate it and with the text as it is, it is not clear enough. Basically, about the issue that it should be compatible with the current policies, I don't think that they are compatible because of two things. First of all, because it's a completely new situation. It's a situation I agree. First of all, I agree with the fact that those 24 months is a lot, but I think that we shouldn't analyze it based on the current policies, but based on the need or the problem that this policy is addressing. The issue is when someone looks to transfer addresses from another RIR to LACNIC, it's because the current status of LACNIC is not meeting their needs. It is true that you can still get addresses every now and then in a certain number of organizations of a certain size that need many more addresses in the system the way it is today. They, they, they can't get what they need. So necessarily, they will have to buy it elsewhere. And the fact that they have to justify that why they're going to buy them elsewhere with other mechanisms different from the current ones, it's reasonable because they are going to use another mechanism that is completely different, so there should be rules for that mechanism. There is no need for it to be incompatible, although I agree that 24 months is very complicated to justify, and it's a, a specific, it's a burden for the staff. So that's one thing. Now, the issue is that we should do something to prevent it from becoming business, but it, it already is. So there are examples. There are things that are confidential and uh, people don't know about it. But I can assure that addresses have been uh, operators in the region uh, bought addresses elsewhere, and they didn't do it through LACNIC. I, I'm aware of five cases that already happened in the region. So the policy is already needed so that the registry may be complete. 
And in other RIRs, it's happening a lot. In Asia and Europe, it's happening a lot. And in the United States, although they have more than we do, it's already happening. And although I can't tell names, they already happened in the region. So it would be very good to the, the mechanism to receive, although it's not reciprocal, may enable us to register what's already in. So I think that the policy is needed. We don't have to run too much, but it's already happening, so we need to implement it quick. And the, the fact that it, it has different characteristics as the current policy should not be a problem because it is meeting a demand different from the policies that are currently in place. Thanks a lot. Unfortunately, we'll have to stop because it's rather late. In view of the questions and the comments, as Alejandro said, nobody is against this policy. We all agree that we need to have it, but it is true that many people agree that uh, many things need to be adjusted. For instance, the dates. There are many doubts that have not been complemented. And uh, as a result, I think that the ideal is to return this uh, to the list. I would like this to happen in the list and not to keep it here. So there are also web sessions because it's much better to talk and not to write it down. If you want to, we can talk with the author to continue to debate this policy. But the way I see the discussion, I think that the ideal would be to put it back in the list to discuss it. And if necessary, we can uh, uh, then approve it faster in an expedited uh, uh, manner and not wait until the next forum. So thank you for the questions. But then let's put it back in the list. Thank you, David. And thank uh, all of you. So let's now go to the last presentation of policy that we have today. Twen uh, 2015-01 by Mike Burns of IP Training. Mike, you have the floor. Thank you. I'll be speaking in English. I'll try to be fast given the time constraints. <clears throat> a very interesting discussion about trading IP addresses in a region that doesn't allow IP addresses to be traded, which is my proposal 2015-1. In LACNIC, we have a policy to, um, to deal with transfers of IP v4 addresses uh, between LACNIC members. However, at the top of the policy is a note rendering the policy inoperative. And if we can go to the next slide, which one is that? It's a question of interpretation. Um, the policy for 2.3.2.18 was passed with consensus uh, with a note that says that the policy would become active the first time that LACNIC was una unable to meet a justified need for addresses from a LACNIC member. But given the existence of the, um, the gradual pool and the restriction of a slash 22 once every three months, LACNIC staff interpreted the note to mean that transfers could not begin basically until that gradual pool was zeroed out or fully exhausted. So the staff asked the, the policy list if that was actually the interpretation of the list members, and there was a little bit of response there, including from the co-author. So the co-author says that Blacknick's staff interpretation does not match his intention as the author. And he writes clearly, clearly to those who can read Spanish, that his intention was that uh, 
a, an entity with a uh, justified need for addresses greater than a slash 22, for example, a slash 10, would be permitted to begin um, transfers to meet that justified need. So what we have here is a problem. In the LACNIC region, there are organizations who have a justifiable need for addresses greater than a slash 22 over three months. But in LACNIC, and only in LACNIC, these organizations are absolutely prevented from acquiring that needed space by the interpretation of the note on top of 2.3.2.18. So I'm a broker of IP addresses, and I was contacted more than once by organizations in Latin America who wanted to buy IP addresses. And initially, we, we thought that uh, once LACNIC received a justified need greater than slash 22, that the era of transfers would begin. However, we learned uh, that that was not the case due to this interpretation by LACNIC staff. So, given that LACNIC staff asked the policy list for a clarification of their interpretation or a verification of it, um, I decided to, to write a policy proposal to basically define the interpretation of that note. And in the first version of the proposal, the language I used was unclear. In the, then I realized that by simply removing or eliminating the note altogether, policy 2.3.2.18 would be rendered operative, like every other policy in the policy manual. So that was my second version of the proposal, was to eliminate the note at the top of 2.3.2.18. So there's a couple of issues. There's been a lot of discussion about transferring and buying and selling IP addresses for, for you know, a region that's not allowing them. And I, I think that it's my belief that um, the author's original intention and um, the intention of some other commenters I think uh, on the list um, was correct, that, that basically the intention was if when the pool runs dry and the only thing left is a slash 22 every three months, if that is not enough to meet your needs, you're free to go out onto the transfer market and purchase addresses. So if you're a company here in Latin America with a need, a relatively immediate need for a, a fairly large block of addresses, your only recourse is to engage in an out-of-policy transfer. And by out-of-policy, we know that means to the detriment of who is accuracy. So, you know, people can transfer addresses um, in many ways without notifying the RIR. And by creating an artificial barrier to transfers in the form of LACNIC's current interpretation of the note, we've erected a barrier to these transactions which provide an incentive for a less accurate who is to result. Now, well, I guess that's it. So. <clears throat> Any questions about uh, the, the intention, which is to begin trading in IP addresses in the LACNIC region under the prescriptions of 2.3.2.18? Are there any questions? So we open the floor to comments or questions regarding this policy proposal.
I would like to congratulate Mike for the time and for his presentation. But I will express my position against for the reasons I expressed earlier. As everyone said, the transfer mechanism is important because this is already taking place. But I'm concerned about the fact that there are issues that might give rise to other problems. Although this is not a problem with the author, because the only proposal that the author is making is taking out something of a text that already exists. But with the interpretation we had in the past made by the LACNIC staff, would only allow that type of transfer, but LACNIC could not assign addresses to those who asked for them at that moment. There would be no other option unless this is made through a transfer. Now, the point is that the current text would block a transfer of a block. So let, let me recap. An assignment made by NACNIC would not allow this transfer until a period of one year. All right, that is a term. But uh, 22 transfer, for example, paying $1,000, you wait one year, and you receive one now, then one in six months' time, then you wait for one year, and then you sell it for $10,000 or $20,000, and I only paid $1,000 initially. I know this is not Mike's problem, and this is a test text that already existing, but the way things are today, we have a certain problem with this. If we release this now, I think we are creating a problem. So we are allowing actions of companies that not might not be so correct who will be making money with IP addresses, and I think that is not correct. I understand what you're saying, and I think uh, you're going back to what the situation in RIPE, where RIPE has a similar um, allocation policy for their last slash 8, where you can get a slash 22, and uh, actually in RIPE you don't even need to demonstrate a need for it. You, you become a new LIR, a new member in RIPE, and you can get a slash 22, and then you can sell your slash 22 and close down your LIR and open another one and rinse, repeat, and uh, this, is a, this has become a problem due to a, you know, a, a small number of participants engaging in this kind of activity and right. So on the other hand, we're not discussing 2.3.2.18 and the, the mechanics of that policy. That policy has been passed and implemented. We're only talking about, I'm sorry, not implemented, but we're really only talking about when it's activated. So it may, in fact, be a problem that might occur in the future if people um, come to LACNIC and, and acquire addresses solely for the purpose of reselling them. However, the difference is in LACNIC, you have to demonstrate a need for that slash 22. So it's not quite as simple to spin up LIR after LIR after LIR and demonstrate a need for a, for a slash 22 for each one. So that is a distinction between the situation in LACNIC and in RIPE, which I think would tend to mitigate um, that problem. But if we think that there is another step that might be taken with the body of Proposal 2.3.2.18 to seek to prevent that kind of abuse, then I think that's where the, um, the change needs to take place. But as for now, unique in the world, unique in all the history of the Internet, organizations with a justifiable need for addresses are blocked only in Latin America from acquiring those addresses. And as we all know, with the constraints of business and the current you know, situation where the internet is dominated by IPv4, 
when you put businesses in that situation, something's got to give. And what gives is adherence to policy. And that leads to um, who is that just becomes more and more worthless over time. We don't know who owns addresses. We don't know what the abuse contact is because the, the addresses are unable to be transferred in a way that would allow an accurate recording of that information. Voy a hablar en español. No, no. Right now, I'm not in favor or against this policy, but once again, the consideration, and I agree with Mike, that this is a problem that has not been solved. And if we don't end up solving it, what we're going to do is, well, we do have a problem, and we have to find a solution to this. And the problem we have today is that transfers take place without LACNIC being able to register this. So definitely there is a group of operators in the region that has a greater need compared to what LACNIC can deliver. And they have no way to obtain this unless they comply with the policy. So it is quite unfair for those operators who have the hands tied to continue with their business because they have no way to obtain the IP addresses. They have at least four or five operators in Brazil, two or three in Colombia, two or three in Mexico, cannot obtain what they require legally following LACNIC's policies. And this is something that we have to find a solution to. So. So this is an issue of properly interpreting the policy because, in fact, the spirit of that policy was not to wait until the end. That pool might take quite some time until it is finally exhausted. So for that period of time, those operators who need more than what the policy can deliver to them can somehow obtain what they need. So in that in that sense, I think we have to find a solution to this. I share the fear expressed by Ricardo in the sense that an additional market is created and this, this could turn up into a business. But fortunately, policies have always have clauses, and that is a protection that we have to include. So when we read the conditions for transfers to take place, that policy specifically mentions that they have to comply and demonstrate that they have a need for those addresses. So in that sense, we are responding to one part. But regarding the new entries, it is important to include some additional issues so that we don't have a second secondary market. This will be difficult to control, but the resources should be justified with the needs, and that is the only thing that we can do to have a proper use of the resources. Um, or clarification on uh, what's been said about the slash 22s in our region. Um, yes, we indeed see, see this happening, but not just for, for selling and reselling. Uh, this is also organizations that actually have a need for more than a slash 22 that use that road to get more um, because it's, it's a little bit cheaper than on, on the market. At this moment, the community is, however, uh, developing a policy to, um, to prevent or to, to reduce uh, this side effect of, of the policy. Uh, currently, they're thinking of um, putting a holding period um, for, for these blocks in place in the same way as currently if you receive a transfer within the right region, you're not allowed to transfer it again within 24 months. And they're looking at adding this to the slash 22s that you receive from the right NCC directly. So just once again, this policy has restricted the growth of every organization in the LACNIC region to a maximum of 1,000 new addresses per month. That's the fastest you can grow. I'm sorry, three months. Oh, Nicholas, let me get my... Nicholas, de Uruguay, hoy Nick. I simply wanted to clarify something because, once again, many of those who are here did not have the 
opportunity of reading the policy properly and reading what item 23218 is about in the policy manual of LACNIC, which this is referring to because that is not contained in the text. Item 23218 in the manual states and this is part of the manual. This is a policy, one of our policies. This establishes the mechanism for transferring addresses between entities within the LACNIC region. That is a policy that is in force. Maybe the technical point is that 2.3, 2.218 is that that policy, which is part of a policy manual, will come into force when LACNIC can no longer respond to a request from a customer for a block, etc. I personally think that that is one of our policies I know. I think that I follow the, the following line of thought. If we don't allow that policy to come into force and exchange of IP addresses already taking place within the region. And we also have a policy to manage that correctly. So this is not like the previous case. In the previous case, we didn't have any policy in place. But for this, we do have a policy in place, and it's part of our policy manual. So what we are doing, once again, and this is not my opinion as a moderator. This is my personal opinion. I think we are cheating when we play uh, solitaire somehow. So we have no way to register these properly in the registry because we are not activating a policy that is in force. That was my comment. Thank you. I, I just do want to mention that in every other registry where trading is allowed, they've never had any kind of a restriction such as this. And finally, I think removing that note from the policy manual will make it more beautiful <laughs> because that note is really kind of ugly. Si, si no hay más, más consultas o comentarios acerca de la política, eh, pasaríamos a, a, la, a la votación eh, a favor o en contra de, la, de, de que esta política se eleve al directorio de la ACNIC para, para la eventual ratificación. Entonces vamos a pedir eh, ayuda de, de nuevamente del staff de, de la ACNIC para realizar el conteo. Entonces pedimos que, que levanten la mano quienes están a favor de que esta política se eleve al directorio del ACNIC para eventual ratificación. Gracias. Pedimos ahora que levante la mano. Please raise your hand if you are against the approval of this policy.
pedimos ahora que levanten la mano. Please raise your hands, uh, those uh, that uh, won't uh, vote in favor or against. Abstentions. Thank you. El, el resultado de la, de la, de la votación. The result of this vote is in favor 35, against 9, abstention 16. Having analyzed this uh, here at the chair, the view of uh, the chair is that the policy should go back to the forum so that it will be discussed further based on the fact that there were quite a few comments and the number of abstentions and uh, votes against uh, make uh, it uh, us to consider that there is no consensus for approval or to discard it. So we'll send it back to the forum so it will be discussed further. Thank you, David. Perdón, sí, me, me, me acaba de... I've just been told by Janina, because you may wonder, but what, what did he say? 35 votes against, 9 in favor, and 16 abstentions. There's no consensus. Para aprobar la política. Obviously, there's no consensus for approval, but as there were many votes in favor and abstentions, the uh, decision of the moderators is to send it back to the uh, to the forum so that the, they will continue the discussion. It's rather late. We we are so we are going to have a short break, ten minutes only. Please stay here in the room. We all want to finish early today. We have the event. So we'll have a 10-minute break, some fresh air, and uh, some uh, beverages, and then we go on. 